You see, immediately after the Civil War, stupid money came into the, into the economy. Stupid money. From where? From the collapse of the, of the, of the, of the, of the Biafran nation. Because the war leaders, those who are prosecuting the war, they declared so many people dead. Some were really dead. And they, they are still collecting their salaries. They are still collecting their pay. That was the time you had all these emergency contractors. And that was the birth of Ebenezer Obey and uh, Sonia Day. And that was, the, that was how they overthrew high life in Nigeria. That was, the, that was the death of high life. How did that lead to the death of high life? When, immediately after the war, the Olai years, the Rex losses, the, uh, all of them, uh, could no longer compete with these people who had cash and they were dancing to praise singers. Musicians became praise singers. High life music was not praise singing. So there was a lot of money. And that was there you had people like Sonade saying, uh, the father that uh, gave him birth is Olowone or Nyobone Olowo Nyobo and all that. And they were throwing currencies at, uh, ones of currencies at musicians. And those who became rich and uh, since then, they've not declined. So that was the time that high life was supplanted by the Juju music, and the tradition grew on and grown. So that was the time you had all these emergency contractors selling uh, a widow, selling beans to non-existent uh, soldiers, so to say, uh, prosecuting war. That was the time several soldiers, especially war commanders, became multimillionaires, and they were the people who were. Uh, patronizing the social joints. That was then you had one in Yaba, one uh, so on and so forth, Maliki Sport and all that. All this grew in 1970, 71, it led up the war. And that was the confirmation of the confusion that yes. the civil war foisted on the state. To a large extent, yes, uh, the, the unfortunate civil war. Uh, those who provoked the war and those who prosecuted it contributed largely to the death of Nigerian morals. And we have not gotten out of the woods, even since then. You've always felt that that war was preventable. Very, it was a stupid war. It was a cruel war. It was uh, a war that ought not to have taken place. If Gowon had apologized to the Igbos, as you said? He, if he had apologized at that point in time, and also been able to rein in uh, Usman Kassina and those who were belligerent, those who were murdering uh, Igbo folks in the north, if we had been able to handle them. But the Christian, the Catholic, the catechist son that he was, uh, he certainly was not able because he didn't put himself in power. It was the full and oligarchy that put him in power. So he so could not handle them? He couldn't handle them because it was not really, he, he, was, he, he was in office, was it in power? The Motala Mohammed were in power? Oh, yes. Well, Motala Mohammed would tell him off at, at uh, executive meetings and say, you just use um, unprintable words on him, and they would, they would just, uh, just keep quiet. I mean, he, he didn't know how he became head of state. So. Why, why was he scared of the Motala Mohammed? I think that was a long story because he knew that it was Motala Mohammed uh, and his clique that killed the Rossi that took over power. And uh, they knew what they wanted. And the, the, the gory nature of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the of the coup, very bloody, very bloody, even though it wasn't bloody at the point of the coup itself. It wasn't bloody in, in Ibadan, where they uh, arrested the Rossi and uh, Fajui and killed them at Ladupo. But when you look at the camp in Ibadan, and the camp, in, especially in Abekuta, where you had more than 80% Igbo officers, and all of them were slaughtered, uh, and also at the Kaja Cantonment, where Igbo officers were also slaughtered, um, it was obvious, therefore, to Gawan that uh, even if they put me there as a figurehead, there was not much I could do uh, to, to rein those who are perpetrating. And even the number two to him, number two to Irosi, who was uh, Gundipe from my village, uh, had to run away. And that same clique is still holding on to the state, right? Till tomorrow, but their days are numbered, yes. 